This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 922, Minimum Variance Portfolio, Definition, Examples, and Breakdowns, by Ramit Sethi of IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com. And I'm Dan, welcome back to Optimal Finance Daily, where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet, Monday through Friday. And before we get to it, I want to thank Fundrise for their continued support. Fundrise enables you to instantly access high-quality, high-potential private market real estate projects, from high-rises in D.C. to multifamily apartments in L.A. And each real estate project is carefully vetted and actively managed by Fundrise's team of real estate pros. Fundrise is the future of real estate investing. So visit fundrise.com slash OFD. That's F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E dot com slash OFD to have your first three months of fees waived. For now, let's get right to the post as we start optimizing your life. Minimum Variance Portfolio, Definition, Examples, and Breakdowns by Ramit Sethi of IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com A minimum variance portfolio is a portfolio model made up of investments that are volatile individually but are seen by some as low risk when put together. This portfolio model might not be right for individual investors, though. In fact, we don't recommend you build a minimum variance portfolio, especially if you're a beginner. But we believe that you should get a full look at what a minimum variance portfolio is before you make a decision. Personal finance is filled with varying perspectives when it comes to these advanced topics. It's important you understand how and why certain things are before you jump into them. What is a minimum variance portfolio? At its core, a minimum variance portfolio mixes investments with low correlation. Correlation measures how much two investments move with one another. For example, a very simple minimum variance portfolio could be 50% stocks and 50% bonds, as they are two investments with very low correlation to one another. Stocks are highly volatile, where bonds are mostly consistent. Finding the exact correlation, known as R-squared for you math wizards, requires advanced knowledge of data and mathematics, so we won't get into it in this article. However, it's good to know about its utility when it comes to minimum variance portfolios, and it's a fun term to throw around at cocktail parties so you sound smart. Most minimum variance portfolios vary from a traditional portfolio mix of bonds and stocks. Rather than investing in a mix of low-risk, bonds, and high-risk, stocks, it's a mix of highly volatile individual securities with low correlation. The logic goes, by mixing a set of volatile securities that don't tend to move with one another, an investor can hedge against losses while maximizing earnings. So let's take a look at a few examples of minimum variance portfolios now to see it in action. Examples of minimum variance portfolios. If you had a portfolio that was 100% U.S. small cap stocks or 100% U.S. large cap stocks or 100% international market stocks, that would be considered a very volatile portfolio as those are risky investments individually. However, if you had a portfolio that was 30% U.S. small cap stocks, 40% U.S. large cap stocks, and 30% international market stocks, you'd hedge your risks since those investments have a low correlation to one another. That means that this portfolio is built on the belief that if small cap goes down, it likely won't affect the international market. Remember, you don't necessarily need to have a mix of highly volatile investments to have a minimum variance portfolio. You just need to have low correlation between your investments. However, that's what people refer to when they talk about minimum variance portfolios. The most important thing when it comes to investing. Like we said before, we don't recommend this for the typical investor. This is a highly advanced topic for investors who really want to get into the nitty gritty of their portfolios. The returns you stand to gain just aren't worth building it, especially when there are simpler approaches to investing that will still help get you rich. Instead, what we recommend is focusing on one of the most important things when it comes to investing. Asset allocation. While it's important to diversify within individual assets like stocks, it's even more important to allocate across different asset classes like stocks, bonds, and cash. When you invest in any one of those asset classes, it's a dangerous game, especially over the long term. This is why asset allocation is so important. When you consider how you want to set up your asset allocation, you need to think about the returns of each asset class. Higher risk generally means higher potential for reward. This means two things. If you want to get rich, you'll probably fail and big. And two, you need to have a variety of assets in your portfolio. 
1991 study discovered that 91.5% of the results from long-term portfolio performance came from how the investments were allocated. This means that asset allocation is crucial to how your portfolio performs. The simple solution? Life cycle funds. Knowing that asset allocation is crucial, I highly suggest getting life cycle funds or target date funds. These are funds that diversify and allocate your assets based on your age. As you age, they automatically adjust for you. Example, if you plan to retire in about 30 years, a good target date fund for you might be the Vanguard Target Retirement 2050 Fund, VFIFX. The 2050 represents the year in which you'll likely retire. Since 2050 is still a ways away, this fund will contain more risky investments, such as stocks. However, as it gets closer and closer to 2050, the fund will automatically adjust to contain safer investments, such as bonds, because you're getting closer to retirement age. These funds aren't for everyone, though. You might have a different level of risk or different goals. At a certain point, you may want to choose individual index funds inside and outside of retirement accounts for tax advantages. However, they are designed for people who don't want to mess around with rebalancing their portfolio at all. For you, the ease of use that comes with life cycle funds might outweigh the loss of returns. For more information on life cycle funds, check out my three-minute video on the topic in this post. You just listened to the post titled Minimum Variance Portfolio, Definition, Examples, and Breakdowns by Ramit Sethi of IWillTeachYouToBeRich.com. And speaking of investing, thank you again to Fundrise for their support. Come by fundrise.com slash OFD to have your first three months for free. Private market real estate has historically provided excellent ongoing cash flow even as it supports long-term growth. Private market assets like these are a strategy for diversifying beyond public market investments and even other kinds of real estate, like publicly traded REITs. And Fundrise is the future of real estate investing. The platform's innovations power an investor-first model by eliminating the bloated costs and middlemen that have traditionally weighed down real estate investing, saving investors time and money. That's why it's frequently mentioned as a recommended tool in the blogs that I narrate here. Unparalleled transparency and real-time reporting let you see how the development of specific properties impact your overall portfolio. Check it out. Visit fundrise.com slash OFD. That's F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E dot com slash OFD to have your first three months of fees waived. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and hope you have a great rest of your day. I'm gonna see you right back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.